Brothers and sisters, our time of Lord's Supper is, uh, is coming specifically out of John chapter 14, verse 23. Let us hear what Jesus says to his disciples and to us, of course. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, brothers and sisters, part of what we have the opportunity to do when we celebrate the Lord's Supper often is we have the opportunity to do that in community. And it may feel like we don't have that opportunity now, but hopefully you are in community with some family or maybe a friend if you are alone uh, and are able to have one friend come and join you. But regardless of whether someone is physically there with you, we know that first of all, the Lord is with you. God is with you in the Holy Spirit and in himself. Listen to what Jesus says. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. If you love Jesus, then God is living with you right now. That is God's sure and strong promise. But it is also true that the Holy Spirit, who is one together with the Father and the Son, is also living in you. And so you are living in community, even if it appears like you are all alone. It is also true, however, brothers and sisters, that we can call the Lord's Supper a celebration because of what God has done. You see, you could say that this was a memorial where we are simply remembering what happened to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. You could even go farther if you did not believe in the resurrection, in Jesus rising from the dead and conquering sin and death for us, then this would be kind of like a perpetual funeral. This is, in a way, one of the things that the, the, the Romans around the early Christians did not understand. They thought that Christians were cannibals because they were eating the body and blood of their Lord. And they thought, that ew, that's gross, and it's weird. Like, why would you do that? But for us, we know that we are not in some weirdly morbid funeral that carries on for thousands of years. We do acknowledge our responsibility in sending our Lord to the cross. But we also, in this feast, we celebrate because, listen, what Jesus says, right? I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. 
I have told you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe. God in our Savior, our, our Lord Jesus Christ, has gone to be with the Father and he will come back. The scriptures tells us elsewhere that God, that God in Jesus Christ is creating, is, is preparing a place for us. And so this is not a funeral where we grieve as if we are never going to see our Lord again. But instead, it is a celebration of all that God has done for us and all that God will do for us and all that God is doing for us. But brothers and sisters, if you are wanting to participate in this feast, we would remind you that we all need to be aware of our need for Jesus' sacrifice. Brothers and sisters, we need Jesus. We need Jesus because something is broken in us without him. We were meant to live in community with God and with our fellow human beings, and, and to care for and steward this creation. And we were meant to do so perfectly. And if you and I are honest with ourselves, if we poke around, we can rapidly see that we do not do those things perfectly. Some of us deny a relationship with God at all. Some of us are angry with God. Some of us sin against God. No, that's not true. All of us sin against God. All of us, too, have broken relationships with our fellow human beings. Some relationships are better than others, but none of us has perfect relationships with our fellow humans. And certainly the evidence is ever mounting that we do not take care of this world that God has given us perfectly either. And yet God intended, God created us to do those things perfectly, to be in those relationships perfectly. And because we cannot, because we do not, because there is no way for ourselves, for us to get ourselves back to where we ought to be in perfect relationship with God, because that is true, we needed someone to help us. And so Jesus comes. And he helps us. He sacrifices everything for us so that we can be adopted into God's family, so that the slate can be wiped clean with us, and so that we can be given new hearts, hearts in which the Spirit and the Father and the Son dwell. Brothers and sisters, if you know that you are broken, that you do not have a perfect relationship with God or with your fellow beings or with this world that God has created. And if you know that you need Jesus, then you are welcome to participate in this feast. This feast in which we both acknowledge our responsibility in making Christ's sacrifice necessary, but also in which we celebrate his victory on our behalf. Brothers and sisters, if you have children home with you and they would like to participate, as long as they, they understand on some level appropriate to themselves exactly what we've been talking about, that they're, they're not perfect and that they need Jesus too, then they too are welcome to participate 
at your discretion. So if you have not already prepared uh, for the feast physically, I would encourage you to pause this right now and to do so and come back when you're ready. Brothers and sisters, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, his last night on earth with his disciples before his death and his resurrection, uh, on that night, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks for it and broke it. And he said, this do in remembrance of me. His body, he said, was, was symbolized in this bread. And that it was given for his disciples. Each time when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remind ourselves that Jesus gave his body and blood for us. In a like manner, at the end of his supper with his disciples, he took the cup and he gave thanks for it. And he said, this blood is my blood in the new covenant given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So, brothers and sisters, let us take, eat, remember, and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. In the same way, brothers and sisters, take, drink, remember, and believe that the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was poured out for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. Psalm 100 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us praise our faithful Lord, whose love continues to us. <laughs> 